Hey, what's up guys? I am your girl Candy and today I have something super special for you guys. I have a few members of the cast of the movie Fantasy Football. Welcome to my wonderland. The whole team's in my theater playing lab. She's mean on that Madden. Oh yeah? Oh, she must be playing as me. Are coming here to speak on it. Yes, Omari Hardwick, Marseille Martin, and Roman Flynn are all coming right here to speak on it and tell us about the new movie and everything else that's going on in their lives right now. So I'm super excited. I cannot wait to sit down and talk with them. I've lived in seven cities before my 16th birthday. Hey, what's up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy, and to my left, I have Marseille Martin and Roman Flynn. And we are about to speak to me. You ready to go? It's your turn. What you about to do? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Wait, is this a speak on it part? Speak on it. Hey! Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for coming. You know, thank you. I'm okay. super excited about having you guys here. Um, first of all, obviously, you have this really dope project that's coming out, this new movie. It's not even about finishing first, it's about finishing it all. Maybe start thinking about what life might look like after football. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They have a new project coming, Fantasy Football, and it's coming on Paramount+. Plus. And when I tell y'all, y'all need to be ready to watch. I watched it already. Okay, you gave, cool. Yeah, y'all gave me a little sneak peek, and I was excited to see it. So I was like, I was super excited to have you guys come. I like literally to the point where I had a show in um, Nashville last night, and mm -hmm. they told me the only time you guys could make it was today. So I drove back from Nashville just so that I could be here with you guys oh this morning. Hence, I am very raspy right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. There's so many things to talk about. You know, a lot of people already know you guys from multiple projects, different things that you've been doing throughout your career. Because both of you already have a very long career. I mean, it's crazy some of the things that you've been able to accomplish. I'm going to start with you. Okay, you've done something that I want. You already have an Emmy. That is amazing. You have an Emmy from The Bold and the Beautiful, correct? Mm -hmm. I used to watch that growing up. Now, that was long before you was even on it. You know, I'm a little older than you. <laughs> but that is crazy. So yeah. how long have you been in the game? When did you start acting? How old were you when you first started? Uh, I started acting. I've been acting for about eight years, mm -hmm. eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. I mean, from a kid and growing up to being an adult, I didn't know anything about acting. Mm. You know, I just play sports, I play music, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then I moved out to LA um, when I was like 22 and started trying to pursue it then. You know, I ended up on Bold and Beautiful for a little bit. And uh, yeah, that was an amazing moment for me because I, I don't come from a background of drama or I didn't study it in school or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's all just God. Okay. Talent, you know? So I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, like I said, I you know read up a little bit about you, and I know you do okay. sing. So did you move to LA to sing, or did you move to act? No, I moved here to act. Oh, you did. Um, yeah. Okay. Because I mean, I was singing where I was. I was you know making music back in Illinois. Mm -hmm. But um, I had a scholarship to play basketball, and then I walked away from it to pursue acting. What? And came out here, and you know, lived in a lived with a couple people, had a bag of clothes, just tried to thug it out. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I always generally feel like when you align yourself with, with what you're passionate about, it tends to become what your purpose is. And so it's really hard for things to stand in your way when you are aligned with that. So right. when I came here, it was like, I could struggle back in Illinois, I could struggle here. It's like, why not just struggle in like 80 degree weather? You know what, <laughs> I mean? you know what I'm saying? And that makes sense. I was broke back home, so what's the difference? Mm -hmm. So I came here, I just thought it was more opportunity for me. and. Um, I just stayed with it. I mean, it wasn't easy. Okay. You know, it's crazy. I mean, I'm sure you know a lot of people probably think they know how your career started and, and where you are, right? Yeah. But, man, there's so much stuff that happens along the way that people don't know. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you just become, you know, a success overnight, and they don't see the, the nose. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I want to come back to that. I'm going to mm -hmm. come back to that. But I want to come to you. Because with you, it's like, I feel like people, everybody feels like they saw you grow up on TV. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And people, I feel like, I kind of relate to your story in a way as well because my career started as a teenager. You started way before me, though. Yeah, really? <laughs> you started way before me. We need to borrow $50. What? It's just business. 
Right. Now, if you'd let us, we'd love to give you our terms. How old were you when you started, for those who don't know? Oh, well, I was five when I started. I, I mm -hmm. was born and raised in Dallas, Texas, but mm -hmm. I moved to L.A. Mm, I think when I was, I want to say nine. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I was kind of like a California kid by, by that time. But mm -hmm. um, I would say Blackish was, of course, like the big break for me. So, mm -hmm. I, like the first month of living in L.A., I booked Blackish and Pitched Little. Yeah, that, the rest was. You said your there. first month of yeah. moving there? Yeah. But you it was not. the last. Okay, okay, okay. Let me specify. Let me specify. Okay. Okay. Two months. In moving to LA, I booked Blackish, and then at the end of season one, that's when I pitched Little. Little, isn't that the movie that you became executive producer of, and that's what yes. everybody found? You are the youngest executive producer in the history of Hollywood. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if yeah. you guys didn't know, she has credits, okay? No. <laughs> Behind the scenes credits. The youngest baller in the game, Marcel Martin! You know, I really love that because um, obviously, you know, when we do what we do, it's like everybody's career is ups and, ups and downs, right? Yeah. So we want to be able to say, hey, we don't just do this. We can do this. You know, mm -hmm. so many different talents mm -hmm. that we have that we have to explore. Yeah. And, you know, it's inspiring Thank that you can you. say that and show other, you know, young girls and women of color like, hey, you can do it. Thank you, know you what so mean? much. And I, I honestly, I don't think that was, of course, when you're little, you don't really you're not really exposed to that part of it all. You kind of mm. are just growing with it and learning. And uh, of course, like me being a young black girl, like by the time I got to uh, my teenage years, I really wanted that to be my, my passion is to mm. uh, show representation, diversity, and right. all types of things. Thank you for the young black girls who inspire me to keep on moving forward for them. But yeah, when I was younger, I was just having fun. Like, yeah. I, like I was just pitching things. I was like, oh, what if we do this? What if we do that? And then, you know, when I feel like when things come naturally to you and things are just like mm -hmm. out, out of the blue, I think that's when the most beauty comes out of it. Just the simple fact that you even came up with that idea and the fact that your family supported you in that. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, mm -hmm. even with you, like, how did you decide, like, when you decided to just say, oh, I'm going to not take my scholarship yeah. and move to L.A., <clears throat> what did your family say? My family supported me. And I think that's kind of like uh, the foundation of, See, I'm, I'm Afro-Latino, so my, my, my dad is Cuban and Irish mm -hmm. and my mom is black, but I, you know, I was raised by my mom. So uh, I think the reality of like a black family is we've always had to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of trying to pursue something um, didn't seem out of the realm of possibility. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up, it was like, whatever you want to do, mom wanted to support me, whatever I wanted to do, uh, as long as my grades was good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which so. is a crazy thing because a lot of people don't understand going and chasing your dreams. So the simple fact mm -hmm. that you guys had families that allowed you to go and chase your dreams at such a young age and got behind you. Which yeah. the whole thing of family is the basis of this movie. Mm -hmm. See how I did that? Yes, yeah. yes. See, I see the connection. See, see the, the connection. connection. Yeah. How did you pull that off? I couldn't do it without the support of my family. So for those of you that um, need to know a little bit more about this film, um, Fantasy Football, it's a super, super cool family movie that you would love to go see. To me, I think it's like really cool. Amari is going to come and hang out with us a little bit in a minute. But um, I think it's cool that he's a girl dad yeah. in this movie. He's a girl dad. Mm -hmm. um, and then Kelly Rowland, who is like, that's my girl. I've mm -hmm. worked with her in the past. And I love the fact that she's transitioning from music to film yeah. as this actress and doing her thing. The whole dynamic between Anderson and Bobby is really pronounced in this scene as far as how competitive they are. How is it working with Kelly, by the way? The kindest person on the planet. I love she her. She is. was like, she's, she was my best fiance. I, I is. adore her. Like, there's... Like, words cannot express how much I am grateful for mm -hmm. her to be in my life in this way. And I, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've met Kelly way before we filmed. But mm -hmm. I always wanted to work with her. Like, mm -hmm. just in some aspects. Like, I didn't know what it was or, like, what her uh, inspirations were or what she wanted to do. But when she said yes to it, I was very, very excited. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I, I love her. Like, I adore, I adore her. That's awesome. Kelly plays Marseille's mother. Yes. 
and Omari Harwick. He plays her father. Yes, they're mm -hmm. my parents. The parents. Mm -hmm. So the family, hence the family, as I was saying. A family journey. Family, uh, love, uh, the dynamic of uh, the relationship between a father and a daughter is really just incredible. You guys have this cool story of the sports situation where he is this big NFL player. <laughs> yes, who is coming to his later years of his career and not necessarily doing as great he, as he once was. And now Rome has come. He's the new hot guy on the team. And you kind of play him a little bit. You know, I think he played himself. <laughs> but, uh, you was playing you know. him a little bit. <laughs> and um, it, it was kind of giving me uh, Freaky Friday vibes a little bit to mm -hmm. where you um, something happens. And she's kind of like a young genius that is, she does something. I don't want to give the movie away. And she's helping her father um, do some Freaky, freaky stuff, yeah. Freaky stuff, like, freaky and get his groove back as an athlete mm -hmm. to be able to do some really amazing things and challenge this young man over here. <laughs> you guys have got to see it. It's a really great movie. I, when I tell you, the whole family will enjoy it. You just have to see it. I don't, I, I don't like giving away a project, but what I will say, it's entertaining from beginning to end. And what I will also say is. It took a lot of uh, athletic uh, athleticism. Oh, yeah. So you did say you mm -hmm. had a, a scholarship when you were younger, yeah. and I do know that Amari also um, played sports when he was younger. So was yeah. that like a requirement? No, not really. Uh, it, it definitely helped, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to prepare for me. Like I, I took about four weeks before I went out to Atlanta, mm -hmm. um, and I just started to train like how these NFL guys do. Train my mind to be able to prepare to think like him mm -hmm. uh, because a guy like Anderson is like uh, he he's used to being the best mm -hmm. and so I have to train that way and so when I got got into town you know they paired us with uh, other athletes as far as our background with real NFL players that played in the league mm -hmm. my stunt double was a you know had been a real NFL player um, so it was a lot to try to keep up with, but you know, me and Amari, we wanted to make sure we did most of our own stunts and stuff. Uh, Especially him. He, he probably oh, y'all was showing much. out. Y'all right. yeah, yeah. was trying to show out a little bit. He wanted to get hit and everything. I'm like, Are you serious? <laughs> I want to feel it again, man. You were playing the genius. Mm -hmm. Okay. In real life, you are kind of sort of a genius. Shit. Okay, now let's go back to you as a producer. Mm -hmm. um, you are a producer on this film as well. Yes. Now, I would like to know, as a producer on the film, what role did you play? Like, were you in it from the beginning of helping, you know, like with the casting? Like, did you help pick the people? Yeah. That? You did? Yeah, it was, it was all that. It oh, was all wow. That. And then the beautiful set pieces, like the different homes that the Coleman's were going to be in. Mm. And, no, it was, it was lots of fun. That honestly. house. That he had. Oh, was listen. Everything. Yes, yeah. yes. We knew from the very beginning that was definitely one. And then with the cars and all of yeah. that, he mm -hmm. just had to look like one big like douche. Okay, so yeah, let's roll back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you decide who you wanted to play the roles? You know, I feel like when you and of course I have my parents with me as well. They're also producers. Um, mm -hmm. I think when you have like a good team that we we had so many people mm -hmm. play like each person different audition tapes so mm -hmm. we kind of just had to lower it down from then mm -hmm. um with omari in particular we we knew that like he had an nfl background mm -hmm. and um he wanted to get into like just different genres mm -hmm. so when we talked to him he was the first person we talked to and okay. that was that was during zoom like summer of i want to say like 2020 yeah mm -hmm. 2021 let me say 2021 kelly uh, we auditioned a lot of moms, but Kelly never auditioned. That was a straight up offer. Oh, really? Yes, because we were like, I knew that I wanted her from the beginning, but of course you gotta like, yeah. uh, you know, see see who else is out there. But mm -hmm. and me and Anton, the director, we were like, okay, look, I think me personally, I feel like Kelly would be great. And oh, that's dope. It was just uh, like a beautiful. Uh, a beautiful fit, for sure. Okay, this is going to be a shameless plug, but if you ever want to give out an offer in the future, oh yeah, think of you, girl. Okay, girl. <laughs> okay. okay, girl, what you want to do? Hey, what it's a do? lot we can do together. Okay. Okay. <laughs> he went from rickety old man to some kind of superhero overnight? Like, from the robotics kids and, Good. of course, uh, of course, Rome's character, I think 
that uh, it just kind of felt right, for uh, sure. And your audition tape, that was fire. It was good. I was like, okay, cool, okay. What did he do in his audition tape? <laughs> I don't remember. I, you had yeah. like you had like a big Cuban link. And, I did. Yeah, I, I was I knew like, his you character already... right away. I knew it. I knew it right away. Mm-hmm. I didn't know actually Amari was attached to or Kelly. I just knew you, it was you, and I was like, well. You know, a lot of times stuff comes across, and I'm like, I didn't want to even read for it, but then I saw that. I was like, yeah, I definitely want to do some business with her. Oh, and wow. uh, I read the character. I was like, yes, I could do this easily. Yeah. And, and it, was, <laughs> it, was, it felt like it was so natural for him. I just yeah. know guys okay. like that. You know these actors. Yeah. You know people like this, you know. Uh-huh. So, the ego was out of control. Yeah. yeah. I loved it, though. Thank you did a great job playing it. Which, in person, you're way cool. I'm a real nice guy. Really real nice person. guy. Yeah. <laughs> really nice guy. Um... <laughs> No, the other thing that I was, <laughs> I wanted the people to know, um, mm-hmm. it was kind of cool to know that you and LeBron James have teamed up to produce this film together. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people may not know that, mm-hmm. but his production company is it's also Spring involved. Hill. Yes. yes. Shout out to them. Um, they actually brought this project to us back when really? it was like only an outline and like the Zoe Marshall, which is the first writer, like she was kind of putting it together and... Mm-hmm. Um, no, it just it just kind of felt right. I was like, okay, LeBron making an NFL movie. Uh, no, it was it was pretty dope. I, mm-hmm. I I enjoyed it. I love dope partnerships for sure. Mm-hmm. Like amazing collaborations bring out the best and visions and all types of stuff. So okay, I want to sneak back into your life a little bit. Okay, back to what I was saying about transitioning and you people seeing you grow up in front of the camera. Um, and basically, I just feel like the world wants to keep you a little girl. <laughs> So obviously recently you were in the Fenty um, Beauty fashion show. I just wanted to know, how did you feel that everybody was like so upset about it? I, and not everybody. No, a lot of people love, people, a lot of people love seeing I I yeah, love it seeing It was the aunties bro. that were like, ah, yeah, nah. Yeah. I was like, nah, this, this ain't working. Yeah, I thought oh, you looked beautiful. Thank you. To be clear. I appreciate that. Yeah, and, but you. I understand like, you know, sometimes when you are a young talent that it's hard to make that transition when people don't understand it's like okay it's yeah. time for me to transition right because i cannot stay a little girl forever and there's especially like for child actors there's no like book that you can go and right. guide you know yourself into because people are just going to say how yeah. they feel and mm-hmm. um especially in the world of social media everybody has opinions and they're able to you know feel like they can speak up about it or you can you do know. you sis yeah i mean i look i know i i am grateful for uh my whole entire family my best friends are always by my side so you know i for savage in particular i really didn't care to be honest like i <laughs> love rihanna i was very very happy about the whole experience in this mm-hmm. when amazing opportunities come through mm-hmm. i like you can't care about anybody else's opinions like True. if i cared about other people's opinions i would not be in the position that I was in today. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I believe that everything happens for a reason and I, you know, mm-hmm. I'm only following my path and that's all that really matters at the end of the day. So. And your fashion game is killer. Thank you. All the way around. <laughs> all the way around. Like Shout when you out to my up, stylist. My stylist, Who Brian. is your stylist? Brian Javar, yay. He is so dope. Yeah, Look at you oh. now. <laughs> today, you showed Thank up you. like, okay, you. you look amazing. <laughs> Okay, go back to what you were saying a little bit earlier when we said we're going to go back to it. You said some of the things that people would be surprised, you are right. It's like when you do start doing things that are success, people just be like, oh, they just came out of nowhere. Right, right. What is something that people did not know or a project that you thought, you know, that you were part of that people may not know that you were part of that was great? It's hard to say because I feel like I've just been fortunate enough to do projects that have very... Uh, healthy fan bases, but mm-hmm. they tend to only watch that kind of show or that kind of movie. Like mm-hmm. for instance, like I did uh, like three seasons of um, the Have and Have Nots with Tyler Perry. Mm-hmm. Like people wouldn't know that if they don't watch Tyler's stuff. Mm-hmm. Like some people only watch Tyler's stuff and that's it. Mm-hmm. And then other people, you know what I mean. <laughs> and then I went and did Bold and Beautiful, and people who watch Bold and Beautiful don't watch anything else but that. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah, so my cousin, when I was, my cousin, she was like, oh, yeah, he was on Tyler Perry. Yeah, yeah. She was yeah. just saying that before you got here. Like, if you watch me on that, you probably never seen me on nothing else. I feel like his the fans that watch his stuff really love what he does, and he has mm-hmm. so much content that they just go and watch everything. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah, you know, I, I just try to do great things. I don't really settle for anything less than that. You know, mm -hmm. I've been fortunate enough to be a part of some amazing things, a uh, small part of things, but also being a part of this is another stepping stone too. You know, playing a character with this kind of comedic timing was something I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, really trying to break the mold because as an actor, especially of color, you really get uh, boxed in. And so I had picked a, a niche in sort of a, a lane that I wanted to kind of exploit um, and for me, that feels like I know how to translate what love is on screen because mm -hmm. uh, I've done it so many times. And so I wanted to kind of just get away from that. And, and this film was so interesting because the component of that for me is not there for this character mm -hmm. besides the love of like football or whatever. But I'm always doing films where I'm the counterpart to somebody else. And so for this, it's really just relying on the writing and like the comedic timing and, and everything else surrounding that. So mm -hmm. uh, that was really important for me. Mm -hmm. What else is it that you want to do? You just said that, that? Com the comedic thing. Oh yeah, something yeah. Something else I want to do. Yeah, you know, uh, it's it's hard. I gotta walk walk a tightrope because uh, I feel like if you really try to create a foundation in one area, like I said, they will try to keep you there. I would love to do more comedy, specifically stuff like this. Um, but also, I want I want to lead an action film. You know, I, I look at it. I can see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm locked in, you know. <laughs> I've had opportunity to do similar kind of thing. When I did Raising Dion for, for Netflix was cool, playing a superhero and stuff like that. Uh, but I want to do more of that. You know, I want to kind of reimagine what it looks like to be uh, an actor in my position. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of times actors don't want to take certain jobs because they feel like, you know, the trajectory of where they want to go in their career, maybe it doesn't, it doesn't look right. But, you know, I, I'm really not scared. I ain't afraid to, to do a great project with great people attached to it. You know, so that means whatever uh, sexual orientation, whatever it is, a lot of actors probably will stay away from. For me, it's really about the art. It's really about what's on the page, like what story are we telling. Mm. You know, if I can make people feel something, that that really drives why I do things. Mm. I need that. If I don't have that, then I can't do it. Okay. Yeah. What do you want to do next? Oh, girl. Mm. Um, <laughs> for twenty twenty three. Um, I don't know. I I I honestly. I've been I've been acting for so long, and I feel like I'm, even though I've been producing for a little bit as well, I'm feel like I'm just now hitting the surface of what that actually means for me. Mm -hmm. So I would want to probably focus on that a little bit, seeing what I can do behind the scenes and learning more about that, because there is a whole, like just so much power behind the scenes more than in front of the camera. So mm -hmm. I, I believe that there is something beautiful behind that. So I, I wanna focus on that. And then, mm. um, as you know, I have Mari by Marseille, my uh, my press online. I wanna expand that, because I, I love furniture, I wanna do furniture, I wanna do home decor, like I love all those types of things. So, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of keeping people on their toes. You never know with me. I like to do just different things and just surprise people and see what I can do. Hello everyone, this brand is called Mari by Marseille. Hey y'all, Marseille Martin here, CEO of Mari. What made you decide to say, hey, I wanna do a nail press online? Oh, because when I was younger, I, I feel like I couldn't do nothing else. Like, really? I, I couldn't do no makeup, you know, my nail, my nail game, I, I couldn't do no acrylics, no none of that. So I felt like press-ons were something that I could somewhat have control over back when I was like eight. So I used to buy them from CVS, and you know they used to have like a like yeah they didn't have a they didn't lot have a, like it yeah. wasn't it I I used to stock up on those and mm -hmm. then I the more I grew up the more I learned how a bunch of people just wear press ons whether they're on carpets like red carpets or mm -hmm. even um, their their job just in general just don't have the time for them to uh, get their nails done or even the pandemic like no one was getting their nails done at the salon so. You know, that's when it really kicked in for me. Yeah, for sure. So I already had something else planned that wasn't press-ons, but then when I realized how the world was kind of changing in that way, I was like, okay, people are staying home, not just for TV or any of that. People mm -hmm. are just in their homes. So I, mm -hmm. I thought that maybe creating something that is just as popping as makeup in mm -hmm. a luxury, durable, high-class line, uh, mm -hmm. Could, could be dope. So that's the lane that I want to take right now. So I have a little game I want to play with y'all. Okay. okay. Just a quick little game. It ain't nothing too serious. Okay. Not too serious. Got the cards in there. I was like, ain't nothing too serious. Pull out the cards. 
Okay. Let's just go a little quick fun yeah. questions. Who was most likely to crack a joke on set? Me. But she you? Didn't, we didn't hang around a lot. I'm like, we did not yeah. hang out as much. Really? I, I, why? I, I, just because I, I, I have more scenes with everybody else. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 So I would I would see him more like when I was behind the scenes and like at the stadiums and mm-hmm. stuff when they were doing their stuff. But she was still stuff. on set even when she wasn't wasn't filming. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. She was really I was locked there. in as a producer though. I would say that. Yeah. Um, ooh, to crack a joke? Mm, I think your answer might be different from from mine. Who, who are you going to I said me. You? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But again, I'm only working opposite of Amari. <laughs> I was like, that's a, that's a good one because he is pretty funny. But, yeah. um, oof. Yeah, I would probably say, I would probably say me. Mm-hmm. I'm probably not crack a joke, but like, I, 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 I like to have fun. Who is most likely to fall asleep between scenes? Oh, let me uh, think. Probably. I don't know. I don't, I've never seen any of them sleep. <laughs> okay. Right. I know. Maybe like Omari. No but I don't. I don't know. I All really right. know. I'm kind of. I, I kind of yeah, just guessed. Tough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if you got arrested, if which one of you on your cast would you call first to get you out? Oh, Kelly. Oh yeah, Kelly. I'm calling Kelly. <laughs> okay, Kelly for sure. The moment she pick up that phone, they hear that that tone. Hey, I need to. They gonna let. Yes, it go. they gonna be like yes. <laughs> I would call Kelly, too. Yes! I would call Kelly, too. Well, thanks, guys, for coming. I really did have a great time talking with you. And and I feel like I learned something. I feel like (laughs) I learned a lot about you in this short period of time. I'm sure there's a lot more to learn. But, yeah, I mean, you guys, you you really, really, really need to take the time to see this movie. It is funny. It was just a great energy. You feel good when you watch it. It's all of that. And then it's a lot of... Black girl magic, black guy magic, all that good. <laughs> Find this on screen, all of that good stuff. It has a lot of good things all intertwined. Make sure you watch Fantasy Football on Paramount Plus. Coming up next, we have Amari Hardwick, which I am looking forward to also hearing what he has to say. And I'm sure I'm gonna hear some different answers of his answer to the jokes. Oh, the and most the questions, likely, yeah. the most, like, most likely questions about you guys. Um, but thanks for coming. Speak on it. Speak on it. Speaking of cities, we were just talking about before the camera came on. Yo, not a camera. Not a camera. So it's different now. I didn't realize, well, now I've been knowing for the past few years, but a lot of people didn't know that you are originally from the A. Right here. I grew up in East Point. Oh, no, you over there. East Park. That's what we would say. East East Park. Park.